InterSwitch SPAC is an InterSwitch Switch a Future initiative. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, students, parents, and of course our friends from NECO. Just yesterday I read about a decision made by the US to deny Nigerians the opportunity to live there if they wanted to live there. And it got me thinking, what is the connection between that decision and Interest Swiss Park? What do you do with the knowledge of science? What do you do with technology? And how does that affect your environment? Just this last December, a friend of mine told me of an interaction he had with his son of his friend. This little man was nine years. His parents had brought him to Nigeria for the x season. And he was asked the question, what do you think about Nigeria? The young man said, I love the people, I love the weather, I love the country, but it looks like a big construction site. So when a young man of nine years says, Nigeria is a construction site, so the first thing to ask yourself, what happens in the construction site? In a construction site, you find lots of activities, lots of debris, you find workers who believe that their job is to work for some days, get paid, usually not a lot of money, and they look forward to the very next location where they can work hard again. Whereas in that same construction site, you will find young people who are looking forward to the completion of the construction and hoping to become owners of the properties and the things being constructed. And of course, as owners, they expect in future that there'll be many others coming to join them and perhaps pay them for services that they have constructed. So as young people who live in Nigeria, the question for you is, if Nigeria is a construction site today, if that same young man is to come back in 10 years time, he'll be 19. Will he still be seen a construction site or will it be seen a country where construction is completed? And once that construction is completed, what will be your role in that environment where construction is complete? Your parents have invested a lot in you. Your teachers have invested a lot in you. And you have the opportunity to use science and technology to change and improve your environment. So what I'd like to challenge you with today is to challenge your perspective. How do you see the environment you live in? How do you see yourself? And how do you see the kind of change and the kind of impact that you can have? So there's this story of a group of men who decided to engage a very big object. But they all looked at the problem or the challenge from a very narrow perspective. So for some people, what they touched looked like a fan. Some other man said, no, what I can see is a rope. Others said, it's a wall. No, it's a spear. Of course, it can't be a spear, it's a snake. And then the last person said, it's a tree. If you look at it from their own perspective, you are inclined to think that they are correct. And they actually believe that they are correct. But when you move back, when you zoom out and take a big picture view of the issue, you suddenly realize that what they were talking about is an elephant. So that rope was actually a tail. So can you imagine holding a tail of an elephant thinking you were holding a rope? That spear wasn't a spear, it was something else. The fan was the ear of the elephant. And of course, that tree was the leg. There's something we said at InterSwitch, if you ask the wrong questions, even if you get the right answers to the wrong question, anything you implement will not achieve its results. So one of the things I want to challenge you to do today is to try to broaden your perspective. A wise man once said, when one door closes, another one opens. Every time I hear that statement, I question it. Who opened the other doors? Could it be all the doors we opened before, but you only saw one? 
And when that one you saw and you entered, started to close, in your panic, you began to look for other opportunities. You now saw another door, and your mind, you think that door just came. What if you now know that that door and nine other doors were there at the beginning, but you did not see them? So what I want to spend the next few minutes doing is to show you another perspective. What you see on the screen is the map of the world taken from outer space. When you go online and you Google the dark continent, this is the picture you see. Somebody had this interesting joke and decided to call this the dark continent. And of course, they were referring to Africa. But if you look at that map, and you look to the extreme left-hand side of what you can see, that should be Canada. Of course, as you all know, Canada is on top of the US. But you'll notice something about Canada. A lot of parts in Canada, in this picture, is in darkness also. So how is that different from Nigeria or from Africa? What do you see? In InterSwitch, when we look at this thing, we don't see a dark continent. We see a continent that has the opportunity to use science and technology, invest in renewable energy, and provide electricity with clean energy better than every other place in the world. In other words, being second or coming from behind does not make you bad. It allows you to learn from the mistakes of others and improve your environment. In this picture, I see opportunities for better housing. I see opportunities for better schools. As opportunities for modern healthcare facilities, what do you see? What is your perspective as a young child growing up in Nigeria? Now it is very important that you tell yourself, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? And if I'm to advise you, my view is a good perspective to have is to look at this thing from the point of view of the glass is half full. I'm going to show you four other perspectives quickly. And as I show you these perspectives, I want you to fix your eyes on three areas in this chart. The top left hand side, where you have the US and Canada. The middle, where you have Nigeria and Southern Africa or South Africa. And towards the extreme right hand side, where you have China, India, and perhaps Japan. The map you are seeing right now is what you call a geopolitical map. And it is a map drawn based on the amount of land available for each of these continents. A few years ago, when I did a bit of calculation, I came to the conclusion that if you divide the total number of land in the world by the population, each one of us should ideally have the size of an Olympic size stadium in our name. Meaning, if we all had that amount of land, we could farm and take care of ourselves and our families. We could do everything we want to do within the expanse of land that we have. Unfortunately, the world is not like that. The next few slides will show you different perspectives. On the screen, you should be seeing four maps. These maps, is the same map of the world, but now done from different perspectives. If you draw the map of the world based on population size, there's a view you get, there's a perspective you get. If you draw the map of the world by the size of the workforce in different countries, there's another perspective that you get. And if you draw the map of the world based on youth unemployment, you get yet another perspective. And lastly, if you draw the map of the world based on internet usage or mobile telephony, you get a totally different perspective. Right now, the map on the screen is the map based on population. Once again, take a look at Canada, and you suddenly see that Canada has become a very small country. They don't have lots of people. So if you have lots of land, 
and you don't have lots of people, what will you do? You will try to attract people to your country. A few months ago, we did an interview in InterSwitch, and we asked all those at the final stage, how many of them had applied to go to Canada? Guess what? 50%. Meaning, here we were, we spent months trying to attract people to the company. At the final stage, more than half of them were already on their way out, even before coming in. That has nothing to do with InterSwitch. It has to do with perspective. What is the perspective? What is the perspective of Nigeria as a country? What is the perspective of Canada as a country? And what is Canada doing? And what is Nigeria doing? And by extension, what are we, people in Nigeria, youths who understand science and technology, what are we doing with the knowledge that we have? If you look at Japan, Japan suddenly becomes very big. Lots of people, little land. If you are a young STEM student in Japan, what kind of things will be coming to your mind? If you go to India and China, you see something similar. They come to Africa. Suddenly, South Africa looks small relative to Nigeria. Now, if we go to the next slide, take a look at workforce. Canada, again, small to an extent. Japan, still big. China, big. India, big. Nigeria, slightly bigger. You go again to the other slide about unemployment, you suddenly realize that if you take a look at Africa, Nigeria is still big, but some other countries have become bigger. South Africa has become bigger, and some countries in the north. What does that mean? That although we have our challenges, when it comes to youth unemployment, the other countries in Africa, they even have bigger challenges. But one of the things you will notice is that a lot of these countries are actually more developed than Nigeria when it comes to infrastructure. So there's a disconnect between you have infrastructure, you have good roads, you have good schools, but yet you don't have jobs. What exactly do we have as Nigerians that should give you, the youths of this country, lots of hope? It is your entrepreneurial spirit. Once again, in one of our interviews, I asked the finalists, what don't you like about this country? They said, we don't like the roads, lots of portals. We don't have adequate electricity. The hospitals are not well equipped, and so on and so forth. Then I asked them, what do you like about Nigeria? They said, the entrepreneurial spirit of the people the willingness to face challenges and overcome them. If you are a student of science and of technology, you have the tools in your hand to create things. If there are no jobs, create a job for yourself. Stop thinking that once you finish school, the next logical place to go to is to look for a job. Science and technology gives you the opportunity to make things happen. When we started InterSwitch, it was normal for people to go to banks, to queue up, collect tally numbers. Most of you in this room will not, don't have that experience, but ask your parents. Your generation did not see the years when we go to banks, we queue up, collect tally number, spend hours just to get cash we work for. You didn't see it, but it happened. Your parents saw it. There are many things that you are seeing that we expect generations after you not to see, because you took a bold step to make a change. If you move on to the very next slide, it now talks about internet usage. And you notice that suddenly, if you look at the map of Africa, Nigeria becomes very, very big. What does that tell you? Nigeria's population, more than 60% of us are youths. We embrace technology a lot. Most, of, most Nigerians have mobile phones, and they use the internet. And if you look at the map of the world, and you look at internet usage, you suddenly realize that Nigeria has an advantage. And guess what? You are all doing science and technology. Therefore, you stand a good chance of taking advantage of this phenomenon called the internet that Nigerians seem to love. So whether you are looking at housing, 
whether you're just looking at healthcare, the question is, is there a way to use the internet as a way to improve your society? Lastly, I'd like to show you something else. A few years ago, based on a study by the Economist ranking entrepreneurship in most countries, Nigeria was number two. By last year, we became number one globally. What do you hear about your country? You hear about corruption index. Nigeria is corrupt. True. It's not the best, we work on it. But what about those areas where Nigerians are doing very well? Why don't you look at those things as the cup is half full and take those areas where we have strength and use them? What this is telling us is that the entrepreneurial nature of Nigerians, our adoption of the internet is giving a lot of youths the opportunity to get ahead in life, even when there are no jobs. They are creating their own jobs. And as students of science and technology, I want to leave you with a message. Don't be moved by the things around you. If you are going to be moved by the things around you, be moved by the knowledge that you have, the perspectives of life that you have, and a desire to improve your society. Thank you. InterSwitch SPAC is an InterSwitch Switch a Future initiative.